ओके फेजा प्लीज स्टार्ट इट आई एम ऑडिबल हां ओके यस सर यू आर ऑडिबल ओके प्लीज स्टार्ट as said by abdul apj abdul kalam if learning is purposeful creativity blossoms when creativity blossoms thinking emanates when thinking emanates knowledge is fully lit when knowledge is lit economy flourishes esteemed prof president of asb university and chair of the symposium co-chair honorable guests delegates member from the print and the electronic media invited guests member of faculty and staff coordinators of the convention and my student colleagues this is faiza feroz a student of bcom second year at asb university very good morning and a warm welcome to everyone to attend the inaugural ceremony of the national finance symposium with the theme economic turnaround post pandemic issues and challenges i now request the convener of this symposium professor padmanabha mohapatra professor and dean of the school of accountancy ASB University to introduce the eminent guest of the day. Thank you, Faizal. Good morning, and welcome you all to this National Finance Symposium 2022. Honorable President, ASB University, and Chairman of our National Finance Symposium. Honorable Chief Guest, Honorable Guest of Honor. and honorable keynote speaker of this symposium respected vice chancellor respected pro vice chancellor professor dr niranjana deans of different schools registrar controller of examination and other dignitaries of this university dear participants <coughs> and students the theme of this symposium is economic turn around post pandemic issues and challenges we have different group of online participants in this symposium like students teachers professors research scholars industry professionals and many others we also telecast this symposium in our auditorium where our pg and ug students are watching on the screen it is my great pleasure that i have given an opportunity to in introduce our honorable guests and speakers of this symposium let us come to our chief guest professor dr m l bhadera professor bhadera is the former professor and director ies of jainarayan bias university jodhpur rajasthan and former professor and director school of business and commerce monipal university rajasthan he is mcom with merit and a doctoral degree phd professor bhadera is having a long ranging this experience of about 42 years 19 years as a professor in teaching research education training and administration he has more than 50 publications including 11 books and supervision of 18 doctoral phd dissertations he is active life member of many associations and institutions such as iipa indian accounting association indian commerce association and in icbe presently he is the national president of indian accounting association and national joint secretary of indian council for business education icbe apart from academic and research he was actively involved in student engagement as nss program officer rover scout group leader and cultural coordinator professor bhadera has attended many camps more than 30 youth festivals including festival of india at ussr and world scout jamboree at england as a social activist 
has been associated and engaged with various platforms at different positions. He loved traveling, meeting new people, making friends, and creating impact collectively. With these words, I welcome you, sir, to this symposium. Let us come to our guest of honor, Dr. Bibhuti Bhushan Sahu. Dr. Sahu is a general manager in NABAD. Before joining NABAD, Dr. Sahu was worked as a lecturer in economics in a degree college of this state. He is MA, MPhil, and a PhD in economics. Apart from these, he has acquired a degree in data analytics from XIMB and advanced statistics from Anamalai University. Dr. Sahu is having a long experience of 32 years, both in teaching and banking. With these few words, I welcome you, sir, to this symposium. Namaskar, sir. Namaskar. Thank you. Let us come to our keynote speaker, Professor Dr. Devasis, sir. Professor, sir, is a professor at the Department of Commerce of University of Vardhuman, West Bengal. <coughs> He is MCOM gold medalist, MPhil Tupper, and a PhD from University of Vardhuman. Professor Sir has over 25 years of teaching experience at the postgraduate level. Professor Sir has so far contributed more than 120 papers in professional and academic journals. He has authored four books. Dr. Sir has acted as a visiting faculty in different universities in India under his supervision 18 researchers and 23 scholars have completed their PhD and MPhil degrees respectively. Professor Saur is an invited member of various academic bodies in different universities in India. He has attended many seminars and conferences in India and abroad and also acted as a resource person in several national and international seminars. He is also acting as a reviewer in many international publishing houses like Palgrave, Macmillan, <laughs> Trailer, and many others. With these few words, I welcome you, sir, to this symposium. Let us come to our honorable founder, Professor Biswajit Patnaik. Professor Potnag is PhD, DLIT, and a DSC, a distinguished academician and a well-known management guru, is the president and founder of this ASBM University. Professor Potnag left uh, the coveted position of a professor of Indian Institute of Management, IIM, to establish Asian School of Business Management, ASBM, at Bhuvaneswar way back in the year 2006. In the last 14 years, ASBM has emerged as one of the top-ranking B-schools of the country with international accreditation by Academic Council for Business Schools and Programs, ACBSP, USA. The institute has since been upgraded as a unitary state private university established by the government of Odisha. Dr. Potnaik has held several academic and administrative positions spanning over three decades, which include Professor of IAM, Indore and Lucknow, Director of Indian Institute of Bank Management and Institution of Reserve Bank of India, Vice Chancellor of Kit University, and group HRD head of the SR group. Professor Potnak, a hardcore academician and a researcher, he has to his credit more than 102 research publications in national and international referred journals and 25 books. Professor Potnak is now appointed as the chairperson of ACBSP USA for Southeast Asia. With these few words, I welcome you, sir, to this symposium. Let us come to our Vice Chancellor, Professor Kalyan Shankar Ray. 
having worked in different verticals. Professor Dr. Ray explains why education sector is the best to work in. Education domain has given an enriching experience and has helped him to prosper over years. He believes that every person should have an entrepreneurial mindset to generate new innovative ideas. Thus, he has chosen his holy profession and platform to express himself. But to told about him, he is the constant source of inspiration to all our members of faculty and staff of this university. With these few words, I welcome you, sir, to this symposium. Once again, I welcome all our honorable guests, speakers, and dear participants and students to this symposium. Thank you to all. Now it is over to Feja. Feja. Feja, am, am I audible? Hello. Professor Saimoini. Sir. Feja uh, is there with you? Yes, sir. Okay. Tell her to continue. No, you are audible, Feja. Feja, you are audible. Okay. Uh, thank you, sir. I now request a Vice Chancellor, Professor Kalyan Shankar Ray, to deliver the welcome speech. Thank you, Feja. Mr. President, sir, esteemed Chief Guest, Professor Vadera, Guest of Honor, Dr. Sahu, keynote speaker, Dr. Sur, or Pro Vice Chancellor, Dr. Miranjana, coordinators, Dr. Mahapatra and Dr. Sai Mohini, participants, students, and my faculty colleagues. I welcome you all to this National Finance Symposium, Economic Turnaround Post-Pandemic Issues and Challenges. We have seen three phases of this pandemic, COVID-19. The first phase in 2020, that at that time, we had a lot of confidence. And uh, many of us thought nothing will happen and it will be a passing phenomenon. But then the pandemic surprised us. Though we had hope against hope, it was, it uh, shaked the confidence of the entire nation. And uh, of course it passed away and thereby at long last it strengthened our confidence. The second phase last year was a phase of despair. It was bleak. There was utter helplessness. In fact, there was no hospital bed even, no oxygen, no place even in the crematorium. The third phase this year, we had fear, yet we had hope because of vaccination. But pessimism tinged by optimism. And luckily, the third phase was not that uh, deadly as the second phase, and it's passing away. We have another problem, the Russia-Ukraine imbroglio. It has a potential to become a pandemic, to become a world war. Now, coming to the pandemic of COVID-19, to judge its impact, I think no statistics is necessary. We have our own experience. In fact, we are the living documents of the damage to the country, the damage to the economy, damage to the world as a whole. The centuries of human efforts have been destroyed in front of our very eyes. The most badly hit sector sectors have been travel, textiles, FMCG, real estate, consumer durables, and retail. To put it in a perspective, during the second phase, just in one month, the airlines witnessed 13% fall in personal demand, and the retail industry experienced in one month a 50% drop in revenue. This shows how difficult the situation has become. Now the situation is a, it's a sort of stack pressure. It's a mix of low growth and high inflation. But this downturn is not simply cyclical. There's no trade cycle. So the normal macroeconomic stabilization policies like monetary policy and fiscal policy can play only a limited role. If you go for fiscal and monetary tightening to target inflation, it may further reduce growth and it may adversely impact the supply side, especially agriculture. On the other hand, if monetary and fiscal policies uh, 
through that through these policies we try to provide stimulus to target low growth it may add to inflationary pressures without increasing supply in the short term that is the dilemma that we are facing now the silver line is that this decline in growth has been much sharper than the decline in investment and this indicates that there is a decline in productivity of capital rather than in growth potential i repeat there is a decline in the productivity of capital rather than in the growth potential so what uh, we have to do now is to de bottleneck remove the bottlenecks in the existing projects under execution and accelerate the projects in the pipeline to stabilize growth in the short run and in the long run many other things have to be done which will be discussed these issues and challenges will be discussed today in this symposium let us take the example of the us economy we all know that uh, there was recession in 2009 after the subprime mortgage crisis led to the collapse of the us housing bubble it resulted in the collapse of some of the countries and in fact the world's largest banks yet the us economy began experiencing a turnaround about a year later after the federal government responded with a series of bailouts and stimulus packages so i am very much hopeful that this will happen in our country too today to discuss this in the inaugural session we have our president professor vishwajit patnaik he is the president and founder of asb university he is a former professor of i am lucknow and i am indore he is an acclaimed expert in hr and we all understand economic turnaround needs psychological turnaround too and professor patnaik is the best judge of that we have our chief guest professor ml vadera president of the indian accounting association he has an incisive mind he analyzes situations with razor sharp precision and we eagerly wait to listen to him our guest of honor dr bibhuti prasad sahu is general manager nabard is a veteran in the rural and agricultural development and the the most important sector in the economy we have dr debasi sur reputed academician and researcher professor of commerce of bardhan university as our keynote speaker i welcome all these guests to the inaugural session the afternoon plenary session will be devoted to a panel discussion it will be evenly balanced with a veteran banker with an academician and with an industrialist in the panel that will be moderated by the dean of our school of accountancy i also welcome the panel members of the afternoon session i welcome the other guests the participants and my faculty colleagues and students uh, i would like to quote the great american writer and nobel laureate ernest hemingway he writes in his famous book the old man and the sea there the protagonist santiago an old fisherman says quote now is no time to think of what you do not have now is no time to think of what you do not have think of what you can do what with what there is unquote this is really that time we do not have time to think what has happened in the past what we do not have or what we have passed through we have to think of the future we have to work with what we have with this note of optimism i end and thank you again and welcome you again over to faiza we extend a heartfelt I would now request our eminent keynote speaker, Professor Debashit Sir. Professor, I apologize, sir. I think I. I would like to start again. I would now request our eminent keynote speaker, Professor Debashit Sir, Professor, Department of Commerce, University of Burdwan, to kindly deliver his deliberation. Thank you, Faiza. Uh, uh, good morning to everyone present here. Uh, Honorable President, ASBM University Professor Bishwajit Patnaik, <clears throat> Honorable Vice Chancellor of this esteemed university, Professor Kollan Shankar Roy, today's chief guest, and President of Indian Accounting Association, Professor. ML Vadera sir today's guest of honor 
डॉक्टर बी बी शाहू जेनरल मैनेजर नाबार्ड भुवनेश्वर प्रोफेसर पी महापात्र डीन एस बी एम स्कूल ऑफ अकाउंटेंसी एस बी एम यूनिवर्सिटी एंड अदर रेस्पेक्टेड पार्सन प्रेजेंट हियर अदर रेस्पेक्टेड प्रोफेसर प्रेजेंट हियर लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन एंड माई डियर स्टूडेंट्स टूडे वी हैव असेंबल्ड हियर to make some discussion on the issues associated with economic turnaround post pandemic issues and challenges we all know that covid 19 was first found in india in the last week of january 2020 that means we have already spent a period of more than 2 years lockdown started in india on 25th march 2020 we completed fourth phase of complete lockdown and we can say that still we are in we are under uncertainty we are not free from restrictions regarding covid 19 so there has been a tremendous impact of covid 19 outbreak and subsequent lockdown on the indian economy as well as world economy in this context we can mention some information we all know that the united states of america is the most powerful country in the world from the economic point of view in fact usa is financially the strongest country in the world in usa in april 2020 about 15 to 17% employees lost their job more than 2 crore people became jobless in the month of only in the month of april 2020 in usa now if we consider the india situation we find that the india's picture is more alarming india's picture was more alarming if we go through the report published by the cmi center for monitoring indian economy we find that the unemployment rate which was less than 7% in the mid march 2020 became more than 27% in the first week of may 2020 in urban areas it was about 29% and in rural areas it was about 26% <clears throat> during this lockdown period in india more than 14 crore people became jobless they lost their job during this lockdown period so it has a severe impact it had a it had severe impact on indian economy on indian business sector <clears throat> we can say that the situation has improved significantly in the present day situation as per the report published by cmi the unemployment rate in india in the month of february 2020 uh, sorry 2022 is 8.1 8.1% 8 that means the situation has improved significantly but we we can say that we are not we are still under uncertainty because if we find yesterday's Uh, news channel we find that the situation is still under uncertainty because yesterday we find that in china lockdown has again started so we can say that still we are not in a position to predict what will happen in near future so in this context we can also mention one study conducted by the federation of indian chamber of commerce and industry fiki in the year 2020 fiki conducted one study in 2020 on the basis of 380 big companies across the sectors now let us consider the major findings of the study number 1 this study reveals that there was a tremendous uncertainty in the business environment in the indian business environment 
during this pandemic situation. COVID-19 was deep impact, was having deep impact on Indian businesses. Number two, this study also reveals that 72% of the sample companies were placed in the category of very high level of risk. Another important outcome of this study is that 70% of the sample companies showed a decline, showed a degrowth um, in its sales turnover during the financial year 2020-21. Another, so as a result, we can say that size of business or scale of operation went down significantly in the financial year 2020-21. In this context, we can mention the names of some significant companies like Elanti, Tata Motors, Altatech Cement, and many companies belonging to the FMCG sectors, including Hindustan Unilever, Nirma, even Moharatno Central Public Sector Enterprise Well, all downsized their business operations during the financial year 2020-21. Another significant outcome of this study is that 61% of the sample companies postponed their expansion program for a period of six months to 12 months, and 33% of the sample companies postponed their expansion program for a period of more than 12 months. That means 94% of the sample companies postponed their expansion program due to COVID-19 outbreak and subsequent lockdown during the financial year 2020-21. Another notable outcome of this study is that 60% of the sample companies postponed their fundraising plan for a period of six months to 12 months, and 25% of, of the sample companies postponed their fundraising plan for a period of more than one year. That means 85% of the sample companies postponed their fundraising plan due to this COVID-19 outbreak and subsequent lockdown. So on the basis of these outcomes derived from the study conducted by FIKI in the year 2020, it can be said that India's business sector has been facing tremendous challenges emanated from COVID-19 outbreak and subsequent lockdown. In this context, <clears throat> we can mention some additional information also. More than 6,600 and Indian companies have legal linkages with companies in countries with a large number of confirmed COVID-19 cases. That means more than 6,600 and Indian companies have legal linkages with those uh, companies situated in such countries which um, situa situated in such countries where the outbreak of covid-19 was severe in this context uh, we can cite the example of china we all know that there is a very close association between india and china in respect of international trade and we also know that china is the world largest exporter it accounts for about 13% of the world exports and China accounts, China is the second largest importer in the world. It accounts for about 11% of the world's imports. China accounts for about 13% of the world exports and out of this 13%, 5% comes to India. In fact, China contributes more than 14% of the India's total imports. More specifically, we can mention that 45% of the India's total <coughs> electronics imports come from China. One third, that means 33% of the India's total machinery imports come from China. 40% of the India's total organic chemical imports come from China. And in case of fertilizer and automotive parts, this is more this is more than 
70 percent of the India's total pharmaceutical ingredients come from China. And in case of mobile phone, this is more than 90 percent. So all these industries have been highly affected by COVID-19 outbreak and subsequent lockdown. We all know that there is a close association between large scale industries and micro, small and medium enterprises. That means MSME sectors. They are interrelated and interconnected. And it is also to be noted that MSME sector contributes more than 30% of the India's GDP. And MSME sector generally follows a growth rate of at least 10% per annum. Another important point regarding India's MSME sector is that 45% of the India's total exports are contributed by MSME sectors. So MSME sector plays a very vital role in Indian business world. Due to this COVID-19 outbreak and subsequent lockdown, both large scale industries and MSME sectors have been severely affected. Now let us consider some important information regarding India's economy. As per the assessment made by the World Bank in the month of April 2020, <clears throat> it was estimated that India's growth rate would be 1.5% to 2.8% in the financial year 2020-21. Similarly, as per the projection made by the International Monetary Fund, IMF, it was expected that India's GDP growth rate would be 1.9% in the financial year 2020-21. So these, these were expectation, these were um, projection, but the actual scenario was more alarming in the financial year 2020-21. As per the report published by National Statistical Office, NSO, under the Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation, Government of India, <coughs> India's GDP growth rate was minus 6.6% in the financial year 2020-21. However, the situation has improved in the present day situation. We can say that as per the report published by NSO, National Statistical Office, we find that the India's GDP growth rate in the financial year 2021-22 would be 8.9%, 8.9%. So still we can say that the situation has improved significantly, but this is expectation. We have to consider it as expectation. This is not the actual picture. Still we are under uncertainty. Still we can say that we are not in a position to predict what will happen in near future so we have already come we have already seen three phases of covid 19 and still we are under uncertainty we are not in a position to predict what will happen in near future because yesterday we find that again lockdown lockdown started again uh, in uh, uh, china so uh, now let us consider the way out. What is the way out? Uh, we can say that still we are not in a position to pray. Uh, we are not in a position to make final conclusion. We are not in a position to make final prescription. Even we are not in a position uh, to identify the exact measures which are to be adopted in order to combat this situation. But we can mention at least two basic points as suggested by different different eminent experts and we can mention at least uh, two uh, basic points the first one is that <clears throat> public distribution system should be efficiently managed now question may arise whether there is any relationship between public distribution system and indian businesses i must say that yes there is a positive relationship 
between the strength of public distribution system and the success of Indian businesses. Because we all know that about 58% of people in India depend on public distribution system. 58% of people in India are the beneficiaries of public distribution system. So if public distribution systems runs properly, then only people will get adequate amount of food grains and other essential commodities. And if it happens, then people will be in a position to spend some money for acquisition of non-essential commodities also. And as a result, consumption expenditure will go up and ultimately demand will go up. So on the basis of this, it can be said that there is a positive relationship between the strength of public distribution system and the success of Indian businesses in, in India, Indian businesses, especially during this pandemic situation. But we can say that public distribution system is not running properly in India due to certain causes. In this context, we can mention at least two major points. The first one is lack of information. Government does not have adequate information about the needs of the people, especially people living in the rural areas, people living in the remote villages. As a result, unequal distribution of essential commodities will arise. Secondly, we can, <clears throat> secondly, we can say that high level of corruption is involved in the public distribution system in India. Why? Because huge amount of fund is involved in public distribution system. In this context, we can mention at least two points. First one is about 80 crore people are the beneficiaries of public distribution system in India. That means 58% of people in India depend on public distribution system. This is number one. Number two, fund allocated by the government for providing food subsidy is rupees 1,15,570 crore, which is about 3.8% of the total estimated expenditure as per budget estimates relating to the fiscal year 2020-21. So huge amount of fund is involved in the public distribution system in India. That's why a high level of corruption is involved in public distribution system in India. It starts Corruption starts with the acquisition of food grains and other essential commodities, and it is also extended. It is also very much present in the distribution channel. So if we minimize these odds, that means if we remove this problem, then only public distribution system can be efficiently managed. Public distribution system can be effectively run. Secondly, we can mention <clears throat> the prescription of renowned economics, Professor Ovijit Binayak Bandopadhyay, Nobel laureate Professor Ovijit Binayak Bandopadhyay. According to the prescription of Professor Ovijit Binayak Bandopadhyay, print currency notes and distribute these currency notes among needy people without considering the issues associated with inflation. It has already been done successfully in USA, Japan, and even in Australia. According to his prescription, if people get money, consumption expenditure will go up and ultimate consumption expenditure will go up. As a result, real sector growth rate will increase, employment will step up, and <clears throat> ultimately consumption demand will increase. In that means income will increase and ultimately uh, demand will go up. So the prescription of Professor Ovijit Binayak Bandopadhyay can be adopted in order to combat this situation arising out of COVID-19 outbreak. In this context, we can mention the names of some eminent personalities also. We can mention the name of famous uh, economist, Professor Roghuram Rajan, ex-governor of RBI. We can mention the name of famous Marxist economics, Professor Prabhat Pattanayak of JNU. Even we can mention the name of uh, CII president, Mr. Udoy Kotak. All have made the same recommendations. So we can say that eminent personalities from different corners, eminent personalities from different 
fields, even eminent personalities belonging to different ideologies have met, made the same recommendations as prescribed by Professor Ovijit Binayak Bandopadhyay. So the prescription of Professor Ovijit Binayak Bandopadhyay can be implemented in order to combat the situation arising out of COVID-19 outbreak. However, it has a negative side also. Presently, the confidence level of people in India has gone down significantly. People are not in a position to predict what will happen in near future. That's why their confidence level has gone down significantly. In this context, we can mention <clears throat> one survey conducted by RBI uh, in the month of May 2020. As per the RBI survey report, future expectation index, which measures consumers' perception of the economy, was 97.9. In fact, a score below 100 indicates consumers' pessimism. As the future expectation index in May 2020 was in India in May 2020 was 97.9, which was below 100. It indicates that the consumers were pessimist. Consumers were not op optimist in the month of May 2020. The situation has improved slightly uh, in the month of January 2020. As per actually similar surveys have, have been conducted by RBI from time to time. As per the RBI survey report in the month of January 2021, the future expectation index in India was 117.1. However, in the month of March, it has again started declining trend. That means in the month of March 2021, the future expectation index became 108.8. And in May 2021, it became 96.4. It is to be, uh, we must mention in this point, in May 2020, in May 2020, that means the peak time of COVID-19, future expectation index was 97.9. But in May 2020, May 2021, it became 96.4. That means situation has slightly deteriorated. Even if we consider the future expectation index in January 2022, that means just the previous month, January 2000, uh, uh, just two months back, January 2022, India's future expectation index was only 103, whereas future expectation index in March 2019. That means where the, where the, when the situation was normal, March 2019, it was 133.4, 133 133.4. In March 2020, uh, sorry, in March 2019, and in January 2022, it became 100 and only 103. So we can say that the confidence level of people has not improved significantly. So if the confidence level of people does not improve significantly, we can say that the people will not spend money received by them for their present consumption. In that case, people will save a portion of money for their future consumption. And if it happens, then money will not come back to the market. As a result, consumption expenditure will not go up and ultimately demand will not go up. So this is the negative side of the prescription of Professor Ovijit Binayak Bandopadha. So uh, in our discussion, in my discussion, I have been mentioning only the negative points, only the odds. Now I have to mention one positive side, one hope. So let us consider one silver lining behind the corona cloud. We all know that China is the largest exporter in the world. And China is the second largest importer after USA in the world. 
So China plays a very vital role in international market. Now it is expected that China may not be able to retain its shares in international market in near future. Because we all know that due to this COVID-19 outbreak, because we all know that China, COVID-19 was first found in China, COVID-19 was first reported in China on 17th November 2019. And it has a severe negative impact on Chinese economy. Even from the perception of the people, it can be said that it has a negative impact on Chinese economy. So on the basis of this, it can be said that China may not be able to retain its shares in the international market in near future. And if it happens, that means if China is not able to retain its dominance over the international market, foreign capital may come to India. Why? Because India enjoys certain competitive advantages. India enjoys certain benefits. In this context, we can mention at least three points. The first one is that India has sufficient cheap labor force. Secondly, India has adequate number of skilled IT personnel. And thirdly, political stability is in, in India is much higher as compared to the other neighboring countries. In this context, we can also mention World Bank's ease of doing business ranking. As per the World Bank's ease of doing business ranking, India captured 142nd rank in the year 2014 out of 190 countries in, in the world. In 2015, India's rank was 131. In both 2016 and 17, India's rank was 130. In 2018, India made a significant improvement in its status and reached 77th rank. And in October 2019, just before outbreak of COVID-19, India's rank was 63. So with the passage of time, it can be said that with the passage of time, India has been improving its status in respect of ease of doing business, in respect of World Bank's ease of doing business ranking. So on the basis of this, it can be said that foreign capital may come to India. And if foreign capital comes to India, it is expected that India's economy will do better in near future. Because we all know that foreign direct investment will not only augment capital formation, but also act as a vehicle for technology upgradation, skill development, export promotion, job creation, and the improvement of overall competitiveness of the economy. So we can say that this would be a huge opportunity for India in the post-COVID era. And if we grab this opportunity, that means if India grab this opportunity, we can say that at least a considerable number of years would belong to India at the global stage. So, <clears throat> India's economy will do better in near future. So this is our expectation. This is our anticipation. This is our prediction. We all know that success of any prediction or projection depends on certain factors. Today, before concluding my discussion, I have to mention one very important factor, one vital factor. In this context, we can mention the name of famous social and political theorist, Professor John Elster, Professor of Political Science, Columbia University. And we must mention his classic entitled The Cement of Society, A Study of Social Order. A cement of, the Cement of Society, A Study of Social Order. According to his famous book, any prediction or any projection can be successfully achieved if proper cooperation among the stakeholders, namely the political personalities, administrators, bureaucrats is present in the economy. So we can say that if proper cooperation among the political personalities uh, and other stakeholders such as bureaucrats, administrators, 
is present in Indian economy, then only we can say that this prediction can be successfully achieved. In this context, I can also, we can also mention the name of famous British born economic geographer and distinguished professor of anthropology and geography at the City University of New York, Professor David Harvey. Professor David Harvey has given emphasis on collective efforts and collective response in order to combat the situation arising out of COVID-19 in the global economy. And we all know that collective efforts, collective response and cooperations, all are interdependent and interrelated. So again, we can say that if proper cooperation among the stakeholders is present in Indian economy, then only this prediction can be successfully achieved. However, we all know that there are certain factors which may hamper, which may hurt the strength of cooperation. In this context, we can mention at least three points. The first one is personal ego. Personal ego of the political personalities, personal ego of the administrators. So if negative ego takes place, strength of cooperation goes down. Secondly, irregularities and corruptions. If irregularities and corruptions arise, personal interest takes place. As a result, strength of cooperation goes down. And thirdly, irrationalities. This is also associated with human behavior. If we are not rational enough, if the stakeholders are not rational enough, obviously the strength of cooperation goes down. So if we minimize the negative impact of these factors, then only the strength of cooperation will go up. And if strength of cooperation restores, if strength of cooperation enhances, then we can say that this prediction can be successfully achieved. And if it happens, then it is expected that India's economy will do better in near future. So with this hope, I'm concluding my discussion. Thank you very much. I must convey my heartfelt thanks and sincere regards, Professor Vishwajit Pattanayak, President of this esteemed university and his associates who have given me an opportunity to act as keynote speaker in this inaugural session. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Namaskar. Thank you, sir. We are grateful to you, sir, for your gracious presence and illuminating words. I would now request the guest of honor and eminent speaker, Dr. Bibhuti Busan Sahu, General Manager, Naba, to deliver his thoughts. Sir, Namaskar. I am Bibi Sahu. I am after General Manager, Nabar, Odisha Regional Office. Honorable uh, President of the University, Vice Chancellor, and in particular, Professor Padmanabh Mahapatra of the University. I am thankful to the University for uh, giving an opportunity to Nabar to participate in this, in this symposium and other faculty members and students. Actually, this is very important issue, burning issue. And my talk, what I'll do, I'll make it brief and uh, only four or five points I shall uh, plug here. I shall talk about something on the impact of this uh, pandemic, then issues and uh, challenges, then rural areas and uh, agriculture, rural areas, agriculture and NABAR, keep priorities and need of the hour. And we all know that world is passing through an unprecedented phase due to this COVID pandemic. And it has infected and killed people worldwide, disrupted the economies all over the globe. And economic contraction is experienced by most of the economies. And the impact has been largely disruptive in terms of economic activities as well as loss of human lives. It has brutally exposed and worsened the existing inequalities in the country, in our country in particular. Our economy remains shuttered during the lockdown period, which created a lot of problem 
for all of us. The informal sector have been overstated by this pandemic. Shops, eateries, factories, transport services, business establishments were shuttered. The lockdown had a devastating impact on the slowing the slowing down the our economy. And while this impact are felt by most of the household, these are deeper and long lasting among the poor and the marginal, marginalized communities. These people are more vulnerable because of their limited access to health services, meager savings, lack of insurance facilities, excessive dependence on low paid agriculture and service sectors, micro and family enterprises, and urban informal services sector and millions of jobs have been lost permanently and have dampened the consumption and consumption pattern also. Our economy also contracted about 6.6% during the year 2020-21. Sector-wise classification shows that both industry and service sector succumbed to this pandemic, but agriculture, thank God, showcases robustness and resilience in this post-COVID scenario. And the economic impact of this pandemic is likely to be more severe for our country on two counts. One is it will increase the poverty risk, particularly pushing the APL people to BPL with time and worsening the socio-economic inequalities that affects affecting health and nutrition indices. Next, actually, regarding issues and challenges, majorly the sectors affected the most are hospitality, hospitality sector, hospital sector, tourism, aviation, and travel sectors, automobile sector, real estate construction sector, and also our fiscal deficit also affected, it has increased. And for this, actually, government of India and state governments, they have taken a lot of steps. And in that context, particularly this Atmanibar Bharat and finance minister's announcement of 20 billion rupee stimulus package, that, uh, that is there. Now, let me come to this rural areas, agriculture and NABAD. Both the government, state government and also central government, they have been taking measures to keep the business afloat. But with lack of awareness and inadequate health and infrastructure, communication, this problem get accentuated in rural areas. As a result, the communities, the communities will be hit hard. Therefore, specific measures targeting these rural communities and business might be required in order to safeguard the quality of life and well-being in the countryside. One thing we have to remember that even during this COVID pandemic, the performance of agriculture sector showcases robustness and resilience. In this connection, I request you all not to forget the contribution of the farmers in ensuring India as a food surplus or food secure nation. But many farmers who are instrumental in making this to happen are in a difficult situation in managing their day-to-day -day food requirement. We all know, because food, farmer is supplying. But many farmers, they go to bed hungry. And this pandemic has created more problem for them now. In this context, NABAR, an apex level, financial organization that is mandated to secure rural prosperity and has been playing a catalytic role to meet the expectation of our farmers, women, artisans, weavers, and all other stakeholders in agriculture and rural sector. NABAD has been providing particularly refinance support to banks and other financial institutions to augment the ground level credit, particularly which are demanded in rural sector by farmers and artisans and others in rural areas. NABAD has been working intensively with the government to bring about convergence of both 
public and private resources for the overall development of farmers community for the benefit of farmers and others in rural areas it undertakes various developmental promotional programs it has made significant progress in implementing monitoring and evaluating various developmental programs for over the years besides over the years nabad has carved out a pivotal place for itself in providing valuable inputs to the state government for for preparation of plans and policies for the development and growth of rural areas it has been partnering with the state government in the endeavor for supporting programs such as self help groups i think you must be knowing self help group bank linkage program joint liability groups farmer producers organization wadi particularly horticulture cluster development and water shed across the states the sg bank linkage program has empowered the resource poor and women in accessing bank credit and taking up viable economic activities we all know this sg program we have touched about 14 crore households in the country generally women whose contribution was not considered now they are playing a important role in managing their houses particularly in rural areas in this context always we feel that always one thing i always remind that is rise of women does not mean fall of men but now through this self help group program and other programs like joint liability groups now they are coming up in a big way and their performance their performance in terms of bank loan bank loan and taking up economic economic activities is very impressive now banks have started believing in them without giving collateral banks are giving loan to these people and their performance and the recovery performance of the self help groups is very good and it is not compared with other sectors like service sector and industry sectors similarly nabad has facilitated the bhumi hina kisan actually landless farmers to avail bank credit for their agriculture operation through formation of joint liability groups besides nabad has been supporting the state government in creation of infrastructure in the name of rural in the name of rural infrastructure development fund that plays an important role <clears throat> and i am happy that also the state government has been undertaking several measures such as samruddhi balram particularly the state government kaliya for the improvement of the farmers in the state and at this stage at this juncture the key priorities actually farmers is actually to initiate concrete measures to increase farmers income by focusing on interventions that would directly contribute to increase their productivity that is crop yield reducing cost strengthening post harvest management system and ensuring value addition marketing and price realization at farmers level the major challenge that is facing we are facing now in indian agriculture is small and small and fragmented land holding sectors and large number of small and marginal farmers more than 90% about 90% of the farmer community they belong to a small or marginal farmers that means their land holding is about only 2 hectares of land in many cases this small holding small hold land holders become economically unviable in terms of agriculture produce with small land size and without other means of income they have been facing enormous difficulties in managing their day to day food requirement next is actually at the public sector that is inadequate irrigation facility is another important problem that we all of us we are facing we all know the important of role of water in increasing doubling the doubling in increasing the double zone area and enhancing crop productivity and farmers income even also crop diversification but more than half of our crop land don't get adequate irrigation facility similarly capital formation which encompasses agri infrastructure post harvest management and marketing is another critical factor for sustainable agriculture growth why i am stressing on this agriculture because that gives food to all of us our sustenance our depend on agriculture it has the ability to enhance crop productivity and improve employment and income of farmers but it has not made much headway and therefore the 
need particular need at this juncture is effective and participatory agriculture and rural development and convergence of public and private resources for overall development of the rural economy and concrete measures to increase farmers income by focusing on interventions that would directly contribute to increase crop productivity reducing cost strengthening post harvest management system ensuring value addition marketing and marketing and price relation at farmers end in this context i must flag on the recent announcement of the government regarding farmer producer organization farmer producer organization is a very good means to attend most of the things only thing actually in the development of such movement the way actually shg has become a movement social movement in the same way suppose if you come in a big way they are, then the rural economy will prosper and once rural economy prospers then our indian economy will prosper many of the things that depend on agriculture and rural development which is largely neglected by all of us therefore let us join hand and help this agriculture sector to grow and with growth of agriculture sector the revival of other sectors will come because agriculture not only it gives food at the same time it is input also for industry and also in some cases service sectors and i will stop here actually by telling this once again i compliment the asbm university for inviting nabard for this symposium thank you very much we are grateful to you sir for your gracious presence and illuminating words thank you sir i would now like to request our chief guest of today's national finance symposium professor ml vadera president indian accounting association to deliver his address namaskar chairman of uh, uh, i am audible hello i am audible you are audible sir yes sir you are audible sir okay chairman of uh, this finance symposium symposium inaugural session uh, professor patnaik guest of honor dr v v shahu e not speaker professor debashi shu vice chancellor of the university professor kalyan shankar roy dean dr p mahapatra all other faculty members organizers of this symposium at the outset i am thankful to my senior friend past president of indian accounting association uh, that he introduced me to professor p mahapat and uh, professor p matra uh, phoned me and uh, asked to join this symposium and i am thankful to the president of asb university for inviting me for this symposium that uh, the symposium on the topic very much related to the present situation of indian economy and one thing i do not restrict myself for giving my greetings to the university that they have a separate school of accountants in indian accounting association now we are having more than 7500 odd members and having uh, around 60 branches throughout the country we are trying to have this separate accounting school or department but most of the universities in india is without having this i am from rajasthan here it is set up that uh, all the universities having a separate uh, department of either accountancy or accountancy and business statistics but when i seen the designation of professor patnaik that he is in of this school of accountants so i am very happy to note it and uh, i also request uh, all the faculty members to join indian accounting association 
because now since last 3 4 years we are working to develop the accounting we are we have uh, our, we we are having our uh, very active website and we have developed the curriculum for uh, accountancy courses different courses we have developed this uh, study material for the students we are having the national level accounting talent search examination for ug and pg students every year so there are so many activities we are doing for the development of the accountancy uh, to a technical level so i request uh, because i couldn't restrict myself to use this uh, platform to just to uh, some information regarding my association So since we now we are uh, having MOUs with uh, the European Accounting Association, uh, we have MOU with the Institute of uh, Cost Accountants. So I am trying to have more MOUs. So joining to uh, this body or this is uh, particularly School of Accountancy can help huge. this is my first observation regarding this now coming to the topic that is economic turn around post pandemic issues and challenges as uh, uh, our keynote speaker professor ebasis as very elaborately with the help of all data and figures uh, just put all the challenges then some solutions and what is the problem to having these solutions and then keynote speaker is directly linked with the rural economy because nabad is doing very good job in the agriculture sector and uh, i support his narration that uh, due to pandemic all most of the our sectors manufacturing industry construction all has very badly affected and few the mentioned by uh, vice chancellor and uh, that uh, is particularly this tourism this transportation uh, this uh, aviation industry uh, hotel industry they are very badly affected but agriculture is one sector which has keep their uh, pace or economic pace at the time of pandemic also and uh, now the all the problem all we are thinking about how we can improve so there are sign of improvement because i am a student of accountancy So I can measure with that last uh, four or five months. I am keeping eye on the collection of GST, and as you all know, that uh, in last five six months, GST collection has increased substantially. Even in February, this last January February, it was over one thirty uh, crores, one thirty three, because when we drafted gst we hope that it will uh, be 100 crores or more but due to this pandemic uh, only there were two or three exceptional months when we have re reached this 100 crore but last 5 6 months or even more we are uh, touching this and it is uh, we are increasing this gst collection around rate of progress so it is a significant size because gst is directly indicator that how much that goods and commodities commodities are sold in the market so this is a good sign but i will agree with the professor so that we have to induct some purchasing power to the rural areas and as nabad is doing for the farmers but other all artisans and uh, other rural people and uh, 
uh, one thing that uh, Professor uh, uh, Shaouz mentioned regarding this uh, uh, APL to BPL. So what is APL to BPL? In last uh, years, prior to this pandemic, we have we are significantly uh, reducing the BPL, and the BPL below poverty line uh, persons are going over to the poverty line. But due to this pandemic, uh, this has been reversed, and now the number of BPL is increasing. Due to one reason, as uh, all the speakers mentioned, that due to increase in the rate of unemployment. It is high in last 45 years, it is highest unemployment rate in India. So due to that, in first wave, the people are they are having having their savings and all these due to that they have survived but in second wave and third wave it was very difficult for uh, this uh, laborers and other persons they are earning day to day earning so one thing it is debatable question that uh, some money is to be put to the pockets of uh, these peoples to increase their purchasing power. They go to the market and purchase and it will increase the cycle of manufacturing and all these things and the economy can revive. The another thing that uh, Certainly, uh, make development in the rural because this time I am a very small village of Rajasthan near to the border. Permitted. That is the Narega. So due to Narega, the 100 days is employment because as we are all from the accounting and economics, we know that the, the farmers are the uh, they have quasi employment for certain time they have employed certain time they are free so they get this 100 days compulsory employment and if it is increased say in Rajasthan the state government has increased 25 days uh, employment on their own as it recently declared so if central government increase it it will definitely give uh, the purchasing power to the uh, rural and uh, backward people and uh, it will come directly from the economic level. Then another thing that uh, this unemployment uh, problem has uh, severely hit uh, the this uh, uh, city people's also. So that also to be considered and some schemes to be given uh, for the employment of them. So why is some way because if we put directly because at the time of pandemic central government has uh, put or state government has put and now central government is putting some money to the account of farmers 6,000 every year and all these things this, this is but uh, some money or some type of employment is generated, then it will definitely we will revive our economy. And I will join all the speakers that uh, it is not now certain, uncertainty is there. We are not uh, free from uh, the COVID. COVID is coming back. It is third wave, fourth wave. Now, uh, rightly mentioned that China is uh, facing this and they impose this uh, lockdowns so it is coming uh, back to back but uh, uh, one uh, rays of hope that this last this third wave uh, it has not 
hit our economy, economy so badly. Uh, maybe due to uh, we have followed the restriction, we have took the vaccination and due to vaccination, the impact of uh, this wave was very less severe and uh, the business and all other things has not been affected badly. As I mentioned, one indicator that CST is increasing every year, even in February, January, it was more than 130 uh, crores every year. So we hope that uh, uh, all these uh, measures will work and we uh, will come back. Now, another thing is uh, hitting this uh, uh, Ukraine-Russia war. And uh, last 15, 20 days, if you see that uh, all the prices are going very high, uh, particularly the Prices of iron and steel and uh, aluminum, copper and all are going very high. Crude is uh, at very highest rate and uh, since now election has been completed and it uh, may affect all of us if the prices of uh, this diesel and petrol will increase, it will very badly in, uh, uh, hit the, all the distribution system and uh, the inflation will go very high. So, with uh, all these, because uh, just uh, I told uh, uh, Professor Mahapatra that uh, I am not uh, in my office and uh, I am just uh, last 10 15 days and I out from my home uh, in the, uh, just my village. And uh, uh, here I saw and I asked uh, all the Storekeepers and uh, storekeepers, that what is the problem? So they all are facing that sales, uh, uh, all this their turn or is uh, decreasing, but uh, uh, they are hopeful that uh, due to all this activity uh, in and uh, this farming, it may increase. So I'm thankful uh, to uh, the uh, ASBM University, uh, particularly uh, the president for inviting me, Professor Mahapatra, uh, for his uh, in regular touch uh, with me. And uh, uh, I am hoping that the next panel discussion and all the sessions, uh, the Faculty members, students, scholars, they will uh, participate and uh, they prepare their uh, papers and uh, uh, highlight uh, these all issues. And as uh, so many studies are coming, so many results are coming, even RBI is uh, uh, conducting the surveys every month and uh, publishing it. So, uh, we all have to uh, have uh, try to improve our uh, economy and uh, we hope that uh, this COVID may go from the world finally and we can live in the, in the normal situation as prior to 2020 we are living. So, as all you know, it is 100 years phenomena. Just 102 years back, we have uh, uh, faced this uh, uh, pandemic, and after 102 years, last two years, we are facing this pandemic. So, I'm uh, giving my best wishes for all the sessions and all the presenters and all the students, and I'm again thanking the management of. Yes, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for such momentary address to all of us. I now request the chairperson of the National Symposium, Professor Biswajit Patnayak, founder and president of ASBM University, to give his presidential address. Thank you, Faiza. Uh, am I audible? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir, you are audible, sir. Well, uh, Professor uh, Bhadera, the chief guest of uh, this uh, 
national symposium our vice chancellor professor kalyan shankar rai the keynote uh, speaker professor debasi sur from university of bardhaman dr vibhuti bhushana sahu the general manager nabar bhubaneswar our uh, program coordinator and the dean school of accountancy professor padmanabh mahapatra the co coordinator professor j sai mohini our pro vice chancellor professor falgu niranjana all my faculty colleagues those who are attending this symposium invited guest all attendees and also my dear students at the outset i would like to extend our sincere gratitude and thanks to professor badera the president of indian accounting association and all other guests for sparing their valuable time and adding value to this national debate through this symposium in fact uh, before i try to touch upon the subject i would like to tell professor vadera that when the university asbm university was in the process of formation and the act was under preparation by the government of odisha that time we suggested that our school of accountancy the name to be kept rightly he has said that uh, worldwide now it is being called school of accountancy so therefore we have kept the school as the school of accountancy which is a very unusual uh, in indian systems but i think everybody should understand that by giving the school name as school of accountancy we wanted to give the thrust to accounting as a discipline now coming to the subject which has been very aptly decided i must uh, appreciate uh, our vice chancellor and the school of accountancy selecting this particular topic economic turn around post pandemic issues and challenges the all of us we have seen that 2020 undoubtedly was one of the most unusual years of the pandemic covid 19 has damaged the entire economy of the world not just india to a very large extent but i must tell you that god is so kind he has made a fabric in such a way that despite all adversities the human being always try to have a high resilience to bounce back and try to address the issues and challenges there is a very interesting survey which has been undertaken by world economic forum taking 29 countries and collected their views on the post pandemic economic life it is quite interesting that views on recovery front china is the most optimistic and russia was the most pessimistic however 83% believe the recovery will happen in a year's time and we are witnessing that the recovery is very fast and as rightly said professor badera 
that after the third wave hopefully if things will normalize and we get rid of this particular pandemic i think things will be much better i would like to quote here ms sarita nayar the managing director of world economic forum he said the world is at a global turning point where leaders must cooperate innovate and secure a robust recovery if we want a robust recovery all of us we have to put our best efforts in the most collective manner i think that corporations civil society governments must work together to address the major challenges facing the global the globe and that those that focused on the short term have been the first to suffer she said that it has been observed that the organizations those who have given focus to short term gain they have suffered drastically similarly nobel laureate professor michael spence the professor of economics in bocconi university has given his outlook on where we should look for growth in the coming years and he has specified that three things we must focus number one application of digital technologies across the entire economy and secondly biomedical science and its applications in the healthcare and beyond the third area which he has highlighted that is technology that address the various challenges to sustainability especially those associated climate change so professor michael has highlighted these three areas to be taken on priority by the world community elevated growth in this context means not just sector growth we have seen there are large damage to many sectors like tourism education and you know we have we have also witnessed that uh, how miserable was the situation and of course dr sahu said that the least affected is agri agriculture now elevated growth in this context means not just sector growth high levels of entrepreneurial activity and innovation a plethora of new first growing companies and large inflows of capital is essential for getting rid of this particular situation now i will highlight the indian situation i think many speakers they have highlighted that what we are facing now in india due to covid the fiscal deficit gone up to 9.5% in the first pandemic year that is 2020 2021 government of course aims to achieve a fiscal deficit of 6.8% of the gdp in the current financial year 21 22 which yet to be seen an advance estimate by the ministry of statistics and program government of india places india's gdp growth in 2021 and 2022 at 9.2% which in my opinion is very optimistic expectations now the question is that if we have set in this kind of a target that the gdp growth to 9.2% then what should we do how do we achieve this professor arvind panagaria the former vice chairman of our niti ayog and currently the professor of columbia university has suggested we should not live beyond our means 
since it imposes a larger burden on the next generation now in the name of growth expansion development we should not increase substantially our debt that is what is the concern which has been highlighted by professor arbin further he suggested wind down fiscal deficit by half to 1% point in 2022 2023 all analyst in the future world series which is being produced by the bocconi university milano they have said in the post pandemic global world powerful digital tools entrepreneurs growth companies and supportive innovative ecosystems will lead the change so in their opinion these are the change drivers and we have to bring the changes through our efforts focusing on these areas therefore it is important to focus on sustainable inclusive growth in my opinion though government of india has taken lot of initiative for the inclusive growth process we must emphasize on sustainable inclusive growth because sustainability is the key now before us this is possible through stakeholders participation and also resilient financial system though everybody will admit that indian financial system is very conservative and it has already stand tall in different occasions fighting different issues and challenges but we need to keep a close eye and give lot of importance to resilient financial system in my opinion i take the thread from dr sahu who emphasized on agriculture agri business i think keeping in mind that particular area which needs substantial development in this country we should not forget that our economy is agri economy so we should not move out of agriculture focus therefore in asbm university this year we have introduced a very innovative program mba agri business and my submission to the government to all the thought leaders that we should focus on creating startups on agri business though we have given the skilling reskilling upskilling importance we have given a lot of money spending has been done on the startups but i think the focus is not that great on agri business startups i appeal to nabar to extend the cooperation and give us support to make this program strengthened and to work in partnership with nabar to foster the agri business startups that should be the focus area for nabar and uh, Uh, other educational institution we will be privileged we would be happy to be associated with nabar to take this forward i am thankful to nabar in the past also they have given us a lot of support every year to take up national conference on different themes pertaining to agri business recently address the in this country under the portal of aima and has highlighted that the importance to be given to information technology manufacturing green technology renewable energy global trade but in my opinion 
the most important area of the agriculture and without having much investment with minimum initiative power we can take this forward with these few words once again i thank all of our university the school of accountancy and i thank the vice chancellor professor rai to take up such a uh, you know important topic for discussion uh, now at this stage thank you very much over to vai many, many many thanks sir to enlighten us with such stimulating words the inaugural ceremony has now come to an end i request professor j sai mohini the co coordinator of the symposium to propose the vote of thanks please please unmute yourself am i audible a very good afternoon to one and all present here it's my pleasure to propose a vote of thanks first of all i would like to express my deep gratitude to our eminent resource persons for today's symposium professor m l vadera dr bibhuti husan sahu professor devasis saw for their graceful insights it's my privilege to thank our beloved president Doc, dr and professor biswajit patnaik vice chancellor professor kalyan shankar re pro vice chancellor professor falgu niranjana for their continuous encouragement and support i would like i would also like to thank all the faculty members it team placement cell r and d cell for their continuous support for this symposium to make it possible i also thank all my participants and students for their gracious presence thank you all thank you once again thank you thank you sir thank you thank you sir thank you sir thank you thank you, thank you, thank you professor vadara yeah. sir dr yeah, yeah, sir thank you and dr sahu thank you president sir and thank you all sir uh, thank you thank you very much i am uh, namaste I am, to all uh, last 10 15 days i am at my village so i couldn't uh, prepare the formal lecture but just uh, try to touch some of the points no, no, sir by your sir, visiting your your village now you are doing a good good and great job because village <laughs> is your <our> country <laughs> yes <sir. laughs> so thank you so much to know that you have got your village when there would be a normal yeah. seat to visit physically asbm university yes. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. No, no, Jaro, sir. I, I, I definitely. I, I am very happy to visit, sir. I visited uh, uh, Keith University and Bengal uh, University uh, uh, during our conferences uh, there of Indian Accounting Association. Professor Anjan Kebal is very good friend of mine. So I definitely, whenever uh, there is normalcy, I try to visit and uh, be Actually, with. Actually, in Rajasthan uh, University, my student is there, Professor Prakash. Yeah, yeah. He's he's my good friend. He's with us. Oh, he he's with us now. He's our uh, joint secretary of Indian okay. Accounting Association, Professor Prakash Sharma. He's joint secretary yes. of our Indian. Okay. He's working with us. Sir. So I were actually in the Jaynand University and uh, retired after 36 years of service in 2015. And then uh, the Manipal University gave me offer, so I joined there. For five years, I was the director of the School of Business and Commerce there uh, in Jaipur. So they have very new campus there from 2011. So I am very much so now uh, conversant with all state university as well as the private university, the working of both. So uh, I am very happy to visit you, sir. Okay, thank you, thank you. thank you thank you namaskar thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir thank you and namaskar sir thank you uh, yeah, thanks namaskar. to all namaste uh one announcement uh, our next uh, plenary session will be held at 2:30 pm so all the participants and the students are advised to attend the plenary session well before to the beginning it will be start from 2:30 pm
सर वाइंड अप सर थैंक यू थैंक यू ओके ठीक है